Hi, I'm Jill Butler with Trades of Hope, and I'm going to go over a little bit of sponsoring part four. So these little videos have been a really quick little tips, um, so you can grasp a little bit in each one. So part one, we did the book. We talked a little bit about getting to join my team notebook and just kind of processing that. Part two, we talked a little bit about coming up with that Frank E list with those extraordinary women and people that you meet that you actually want to put in your book. How are you having parties? Are you partying um, in your direct sales world and in Trades of Hope and meeting women and people and connecting those dots to the right people at your parties, whether it's your launch party, whether it's another party. And then part three was kind of just putting the names in the book and uh, processing like taking those names from the parties, from your Frankie list and putting them in here and making the connection. The next thing I wanna to talk to you about is once the names are in the book, like what are you doing, right? And so I wanna to talk to you and give you like one or two examples, but talk to you about the two, two, two. So a lot of times in the direct sales industry and in the, in the, in the direct sales world, we talk about follow-up. So the key to sponsoring is follow-up. So in every $1,000 in sales, um, typically in Trades of Hope, we have a lurking compassion entrepreneur that you need to find. And if you're not partying, you have to be partying, right? And we found that there's success in writing them in our books. But the key is, is that you have to do the follow-up. So you're probably like, so Jill, when do I follow up? How does that look? What does that look like? I write the name down. Now what? So there's a method within, I believe, uh, for customer care. Um, so if somebody comes to a party and they purchase from you, um, we usually recommend that you do the 222. You contact them, follow up with them two days later. You contact them and thank them two weeks later and potentially two months later. Now, some of that follow up with a customer can be, did you like your product? Would you consider hosting? Do you want to know more information about joining our family, our sisterhood, being a voice? And so that follow-up can be a little bit different within a customer realm. But if we're talking about a sponsoring realm, same thing can be true. So for example, the girl I'm going to be giving you an example of today, I wrote her name at the top, and then I would typically write down um, her why at the very top of her name. So for example, this, um, this girl right here, I wrote her name down at the top, and then up above, I actually wrote down her why right up here. And her why was that she loved the mission, but she was having a baby. I put her sales form over here. So her sales form is on this side. I write down her name here, and I'm writing down my contacts kind of all over. Now, if you're a super organized person, you have it dated, you have everything ready to go. I, on the other hand, I'm kind of a scratch note person. It's kind of everywhere, right? And so... Um, she actually checked the box that she wanted to learn more about becoming a compassionate entrepreneur at the party in January of 2016. And just FYI, this video is now in September of 2017 and she has not joined and I've asked her and she doesn't plan on it. So for those of you that are sometimes like, wait a minute, they came to the party, they loved what I did, they want to join. Sometimes they just learn more and or they find that it's just not going to work for them. It's not the season but I still added her to my book because she actually was a family member. She was a relative in the Frankie list of the actual hostess. So I wrote down that I called her. Um, let's see, um, the party was January 30th. I called her um, a couple times, but texted her throughout February 2014 or 2016 in February. Um, and so this is where you could go into the 222 method. So two days after the um, two days after the party, I would message her and say, "Hey, girl, just wanted to check with you. You should be getting your Haiti bracelet soon. I'm super excited to talk to you more about joining our family." If she responds that day, I'm ready to you know make an interaction with her. I'm ready to build that relationship with her and make that connection. I don't need to be like, "Okay, do you want me to send you information on joining?" I'm literally just making that two to two conversation. Let's say I messaged her two days after the party and I hear nothing. Then I jot her in my calendar for two weeks later to follow up with her. I'm also writing it in my notebook, but I'm also writing it in my calendar because follow-up is key to anything and you have to have the data to know. Like I would maybe have for, forgot about this girl and she may actually still want to change the world with me, but I never followed up. I never kept her name. I never did any kind of data to know that truly, um, she can change the world with us if I just keep the date and keep the name in here, okay? So two days after the party, I message her, and then she messages me back. So then it's a, then it's a communication, right? So then we're communicating. If at any time she does two to three days of no communication after your communication, typically I give them a two-week you know, two break. If there's still no communication, I move her to a two-month 
checkup or a two month conversation. So this girl in particular has been moved to a two month. Um, it looks like it's gonna almost be a two year, but every two months I check in on her, just kind of see what she's doing. And then I may even drop it for about a six months if I'm not hearing from her. But actually she just said it's not the right season, just give her some time. So I'm gonna give her probably six months um, since my last follow up with her. Um, another example would be, um, I met this um, particular compassionate entrepreneur in January. Um, she actually did not host that she wanted to join, but when I followed up with her, um, it says, so here's her receipt over here. I'm not going to get zoom in too much. Here's her receipt. Here's her information. Um, when I followed up with her two days after the party, um, I said, Hey, would love to talk to you more about trades of hope. I found that you had just this amazing personality that would be amazing in what we do. Again, going back to uh, part two of how to join and how to sponsor. Um, she was on the Frankie list at that hostess's party. I just could tell she was extraordinary. Um, she wasn't related to the host. She wasn't, a, she was probably a friend. She wasn't a relative. She might've been acquaintance. She wasn't a neighbor. Um, she, her kids, I don't think were in contact because the, the hostess had high school and college age kids. So she was just an extraordinary person. So I messaged her and I wrote it on there. I messaged her about joining and I did. And she wrote back, you know what? I will consider it. And that was um, January and about, uh, it says February 14th, she joined our family. And so um, there's lots of highlighting, there's lots of marketing, there's lots of follow-up. Now, if she wouldn't have followed up and said, yeah, I wanna know a little bit more about that, then I would have moved her to the two week. Just because I said, I think you'd be amazing at this, she might not want to. And she may not even wanna comment or respond, and so then I move her to two weeks. Hey, just checking in, I messaged you two weeks ago. Just wanted to let you know, I think you'd be amazing at what we do at Trades of Hope. Don't hear anything? Then I would have moved her to the two month reach, reaching point. So I hope that this information kind of helps you with the two, two, two. It helps you put your names in here. So you have a folder, you have your notebook. You start with that Frankie list of women coming into those parties, whether they're online or at home parties or even vendor events. Ask them how they know about the vendor event. Um, and uh, you do that, then you start putting the names in the book and you just start from there. You just start collecting those names from those parties. And then at the top, you put the name at the top of the journal, of the journal page, you put why you think they'd wanna join or why they told you they may wanna join or they may never even shared it with you. You may need to get their information on that down the road. And then you start to bridge that relationship and use the 222 follow-up system, just like we do for our customers. It's just pretty much how we want to add women to our team and join um, them together and bring them together as a family. So then at the very, not at the very end, but um, throughout the months as I do our sponsoring event and I do what's called our Crave event, um, I just kind of go through and I'm like, oh, show, I just messaged her last month. She's not quite to her two month. I better wait. And I, I'm constantly collecting women that I, no, that sounds kind of bad, but I'm constantly collecting names and women and people and greeting them and meeting them and seeing who I want to be part of Trades of Hope and especially Diamond Sparklers, but um, especially who wants to be part of our sisterhood because um, her success is my success, my success is her success, and it's a beautiful, beautiful cycle and system of what we do um, in changing the world. So that's a little bit more. Hope you enjoyed. Bye.